everyone. Welcome to Living with Autism by Michael Lettman. Today, we'll be talking about my fourth year, fall semester. And here, I have two very special guests here with me. It is the two college professors who I've been with during my fourth year fall semester. Say hello to Professor Susan Carpenter. Hi, everyone. And Professor Jeremy Sawyer. Pleasure to be here with you, Michael, and with you, Sue. Let's get started. Professor Sawyer and Professor Carpenter, please ask me your questions. Take your turn, take your time, and I'll be more than happy to answer from my own perspective as a student in your classes. Yeah, yeah we were really lucky, I think, to both have you in our classes this semester, Michael, and uh, really enjoyed having you in the class. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of curious, like, uh, you know, how you felt about the class. Was there, you know, what do you most, uh, what did you most enjoy? Uh, were there things you disliked about the experience? Well, to answer that, Professor Sawyer, I was attending Psy 2400. What was the name of that class again? Uh, Psychological Disorders in Young Children. Although Sue and I have been working for years to change that title because we really don't like it. <laughs> it's really, as you know, it's really more a class about disabilities and applying that knowledge to educational settings. So uh, yeah, but that's the official title of the class. Understood. And of course, the reasons I took that class, not only Professor Sawyer was in it, but it was related to two, th two things of my interests, children and the disability community. And the class I was attending with Professor Susan Carpenter was EDC 2200. Um, what was the name of that class again, Professor Carpenter? It's, it's called Art in Education Workshop. And the workshop is the important word in that because it's really a, a hands-on class. So, um, yeah, it's a workshop rather than a seminar. Understood. Answering your question now, Professor Sawyer, here's the thing. Lots of experiences I've learned in your class, all right. I mean, so much experiences, it's hard to point on one. I mean, if I remember from the beginning of the class, the beginning, hmm, um, I've learned how much the disability community have suffered back in the, um, in the 1900s, I believe. Something about, um, there was the name of this location where the disability community were all suffering miserably, not accepted into society. What was, do you remember something like that? Is it the Willowbrook Institution? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think you saw that in the documentary Crip Camp. Is that right? Right. How could I forget that documentary? So much I've learned from it. Yeah, I'm glad you appreciated that. And yeah, because it really does go through the history of the, the oppression of people with disabilities and how they were kept out of society. And then also how they stood up and fought for their rights to be included. And uh, yeah, I think you really enjoyed that, right? That seeing that documentary. And I'm glad I did well with the assignment and from what I've learned from it. And I can understand at the end that camp I kind of feel sorry that it had to end somehow. Mm -hmm. Also, at the end, I think disability rights managed to have advanced, right? Yeah. So yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. was, um, and that's kind of where we have our whole, you know, special education system these days comes out of winning the rights to attend our local public schools and get the services we need. And, you know, you and I talked about this um, a little bit, Michael, um, just, you know, winning more respect in society and sort of, even though, as you pointed out, we still have a long way to go um, and not everyone's attitude has changed. But I think we kind of talked about how there has been progress made since people started fighting for their rights in the 60s, 70s, as that movie shows. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can continue that, continue that today. Understood. Hmm. Professor Carpenter, what would you like to ask me about me having hmm. me in your class? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that it was 
really a pleasure to have you in the class. And I was really pleased with how everybody was pitching in and working together. And um, so that, that was really great to see. And I just remember this one particular workshop where we were doing Jackson Pollock style paintings. And I have mentioned this to Professor Sawyer. And uh, one of the other students said, oh, Michael, come and help me. And you just got right in there and, and helped her and you worked as a team and you took risks, you know, it was quite messy and not something I'm sure you would ordinarily do. Um, and so I was delighted to see that. So my question to you is, um, what was challenging for you in the class? What, what, what was hard? Um, I yeah. shall answer that. Okay, well, I think the challenge was art itself. From what I learned in your class, I'm familiar with two very important subjects, abstract and creativity. Yeah, I've learned much about that. All I know is art can be very complicated. I think that was a challenge of your class. Mm. Okay, interesting. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, those were two really key words that were banted around a lot, creativity and abstract, because we were really trying to get away from the teacher-directed coloring in type of um, art assignment. So, yeah, you, 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 you hit it on the head there. Hmm. Professor Sawyer, is there some other question you'd like to ask me? Yeah, yeah, I would. Um, you know, yeah, Michael, I, I appreciated my class, your contributions to the class discussion. And um, I also really liked the way that you reached out to other classmates and engaged them in conversation. Um, you know, you often ask them good questions, I thought, about where they work, what their job is like, you know, especially the students who who mentioned that they worked with people with disabilities, you showed a real curiosity to connect with them and to know about their jobs. And uh, whenever we did kind of turn and talks or, um, you know, we paired up with other students to discuss, you were always right in there sharing your ideas and connecting with other students. So I was just gonna ask you what, what that felt like, that experience and how you felt about uh, the social connections you were able to make in the class. Allow me to explain that as I say this to my viewers. Um, my viewers, I guess I have to be honest here. As Professor Sawyer just asked me, yes, it, I try to connect with my classmates. I mean, I want to see if I can get to know them. I mean, they're inside 2400, and so I want to ask if they cared about the disability community. And from what I asked about them, some of them did actually work with people with disabilities, and I actually liked that. I, I got very curious. I'm glad I was able to connect with some of them. Yeah. Yeah, and do you feel like you learned uh, you learned about them or learned about their jobs uh, from what they shared with you? Mm -hmm. I feel like I have. Hmm. Um, Professor Carpenter, do you have a question for me? Hmm. Uh, so, although you were in the art and education workshop with me, you also presented at my Psych 2400 class, and you also presented at the um, International Forum in Cork online with me. And so really your advocacy work, you know, goes beyond the classroom. Um, and one of my students asked a question, actually, which I will pose to you, which I thought was a good question, is what motivates you? Oh, okay. Hmm. As an advocate with a project, I feel like what the disability community had gone through. Let me say one more time. After learning what the disability community had gone through, especially from both of you, I learned a lot from both of you. I get the feeling that 
there need to be more people out there who can respect the disability community. And since I started my project, I want to see if I can give that a try. That's why I try my best to be an advocate. Even though I'm still at an amateur level, I'm trying to give it my all, try to take my time with my project, see what else I can do. Hi. Even though I don't feel like I'm a professional just yet. So um, the second question that same student had, which sort of adds on to what I just asked you and, and your response is, so how do you deal with people who are disrespectful to you or have a bad attitude towards you? Ooh, that is a very clever question you asked me there. Mm -hmm. Hmm, how can I point this out? Honestly, I think I feel lucky. I don't think anybody treated me BAD just yet. I mean, I know there are people like that out there here in our world. Can't control that. Gotta get used to it. What can we do? Anyway, I'm always afraid actually when if something like that were to happen to me, not just the disability community. So I just hope to, I don't know, somehow avoid them or so, somehow, or trying to find a solution to get out away from a problem. Hey, sometimes I get the feeling being in a private space could help me think, you know, more, more clearly, much better to see if I could figure any solutions to get out of future problems. Because if I were to deal with people disrespectful to me or treated me BAD, which is unacceptable for the disability community, boy, I just feel like I want to get away from them and go to people who do respect me and will accept me. Mm -hmm. mind accepting me. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to put words into your mouth, but my sense is that you really treat people with respect. And so you get that back. That That's my sense. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, both college professors, just in case, do you have any more questions for this student? Yeah, yeah, I have a thought and I'm curious maybe to see what you think about it, Michael. Um, you know, I, kn I know you're also, as you said, you treat people with respect. You're also kind of a humble person, I would say, you know, um, it, in, in the sense that you tend to downplay your expertise. Um, and of course, we know you're an advocate for the disability community and you have lots of insights. Um, and, you know, when I was you know, trying to teach the students um, about inclusion and what that means. And for instance, inclusion in higher education, it just seemed like you are kind of the living embodiment of, of all of that, you know, being um, part of the Melissa Riggio program and included in higher education and speaking as an expert on autism and disability in general. I felt like you really did emerge as the expert you are, you know, in my class. Um, and I was glad to see that. And I'm curious about, you know, your feelings about that. If, if you felt like you were able to share those valuable things with other students about uh, you representing inclusion and being an expert uh, and having insights to share. Well, I guess answering that question, those were really kind words you said to me, Professor Sawyer. And I gotta say, I guess from what I remembered when you had me in your class, you said I'd be like, <laughs> you see, I, you think you said I'd be just the kind of student who could explain much to your other student, right? Exactly. So I guess I'm, I'll be honest, I do feel proud that I was able to share much about me being an advocate, not to mention my college program, of course. Mm -hmm. I do kind of feel proud, yes. Mm -hmm. I shared much of my advocacy work. I shared a lot about my college program, not just myself and the mentor who was assigned to me in that class. Yep, I just hope they manage to have learned much about the Melissa Riccio Higher Education Program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think um, that's what kind of stands out about you and your work is that 
for many people in your program and uh, it's, you know, they're wanting to achieve for their own goals and obviously for their own careers and future. And that's perfectly understandable. But I think what makes you special is you're looking at the bigger picture. You're looking up beyond yourself. So uh, we, we, uh, and I speak for Jeremy, that we really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I thank you. Hmm. Professor Carpenter, any other question you have for me? Hmm. Um, well, let me ask you about the presentations. What, yeah, tell me how you felt about the presentation that you did in Ireland. Oh, yeah. Or Ireland. Well, I was kind of honored that you have me as a guest speaker back then. I'm glad that it turned out okay at the end. I got a little nervous there. But you and I shared our work. One of my videos got shared. And I'm glad some of them actually enjoyed it. <laughs> I can't ever forget that. I felt proud. Yeah. No, they, did. they certainly did. They applauded. And uh, we'll, we'll get the recording soon, I hope. Thanks. Um, okay, just in case, uh, as both my college professors have anything else to ask me, just in case. Um, well, I'm, I'm kind of curious for my own learning purposes. Um, do, you, do you think there were things about, um, like things about my class that would have mm -hmm. been helpful if it was different or different, different structures or different activities? or different things that would have been helpful to you um, that I might incorporate in the future or try in the future as I, as I grow um, in this way as well? I'll be honest, not really sure. I mean, I enjoyed your class. I got along with your cla my classmates. Um, I've, lear I've learned much from your class. You taught a lot about the disability community. And I'm glad I managed to have done well on your assignments. <laughs> and there are a lot of videos that I watch, not just the documentaries. But all, every single one related to someone with a disability. And I'm glad I was able to understand them. I learned a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't ever forget what I've learned from you. Uh, no, no, I mean, um, let me uh, get to the, uh, one topic I meant. But people with disabilities that can't see or hear. There are a few people that I've learned from your work. Who? I feel sorry for them. You know how glad I am that there are people, respectful people who are aiding those people. Some of them turned out okay. Some of them even turned out successful. I'm happy for them. Ooh. Yeah, it, yeah, I'm glad you appreciated that. Um, yeah, we learned about, we, we saw some deaf and blind children and some deaf and blind adults in the videos and yeah, it, it's kind of, yeah, I mean, it's kind of amazing human ingenuity, right? How we can, we can work, you know, in a sense, like work around disabilities in all this way so that it doesn't, it doesn't have to hold people back if we have the right tools and the right supports around people. Um, it doesn't have to hold them back, right? Do you feel the sim similar way or similar yeah, ideas? I felt, I felt something like that. I mean... I'm in my mind, like I said, I felt sorry for them, and I was glad that there were kind people aiding them in life. And when you say you feel sorry for them, do you do you mean like you um you kind of can connect with the struggles they're going through, or you kind of like empathize with them or feel for them in that way? That's hard to explain. I mean, I just couldn't imagine someone born into the real world without being able to see the world or even hear somebody. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's how I feel about the deaf blind community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that it's hard to kind of imagine that situation or to put yourself in those shoes. Yeah. Did Michael just freeze? Oh, trapped in some oh, kind of... Okay, um, I'm not, I'm not sure this is from my perspective, but I feel like the deaf blind community are somehow trapped in an inside cage from right in here. 
seeing nothing but nothing and can't hear a thing or can't see a thing with a moving body. That's how mm. I see it. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sue. Yeah. Oh, I was just thinking I have a friend's colleague who's blind. Uh, she's a psychologist. Um, she wasn't uh, born blind. She became blind as a young teenager. And so her experience, I think, is very different from somebody who is born blind. Oh. Uh, but then, of course, there's the deaf community who are proud of being deaf and say, well, they're, they're happy to be deaf. And what's wrong with being deaf? So um, certainly for me to think that I could never hear music again, it would be devastating. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Intriguing. I guess some people who are deaf are happy to be deaf. I think I can understand that. Some things you don't have to hear. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's life. Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, that's say? really interesting. I just it made me think of you. It's kind of random, but it made me think when you said that, Sue. You know, if you if you were to go deaf and never hear music again, it makes me kind of wonder though what your inner world might be like. Like if you would if you would actually kind of in your mind hear music. Of course. Kind of, of course. like the composer who went deaf and kept composing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, Beethoven. Yeah. Did. Um, so, yeah, and again, a very different experience, God forbid, if I was to go deaf from somebody who was born deaf. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Good point. But yeah, yeah. And, and, and Michael, then, yeah, you raised some interesting points. And it's, it's hard for us to know exactly what that experience of someone else might be like. Um, but then if people are born deaf or blind, it's probably a very different than we would experience it, you know, if it, if it were to happen to us tomorrow. Um, because they're used to kind of sensing the world with these other senses. And they probably don't, I'm imagining they probably don't necessarily feel cut off from the world or like that they're missing a big part of experience because they have their ways of sensing and sensing people and the world and to them that's just their experience so um as long as there's support around them i imagine it could be um not necessarily one that they feel like they're cut off hmm, made a very good point there i mean it makes sense as long as they're living in our world, trying to fit into society with supporters around them. That's very good. I worked for, at the Lavelle School for the Blind for I think three years, which was in the Bronx. And it was for students who also had intellectual disabilities as well as uh, visual impairment. And um, without, you know, what, you know, is you make a risk, take a risk of generalizing, but those students had such musicality that their hearing was so much more astute because they didn't have sight. And also they had such vitality and joy in their, in their, in their life. So, uh, yeah, it was wonderful, wonderful working there. Uh, yeah. I see. Hmm. Let's see. What was I going to? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to mention one other thing, actually, Michael. Sorry to butt in. I just remembered the uh, art teacher at Lavelle School for the Blind. She still works there. She she is blind. Um, she has a guide dog. She does the most amazing art projects with her students. A lot of sculpture, a lot of obviously tactile, three-dimensional work. And... Um, you know, she talked about colors with students. And of course they never had never seen red or green or yellow. So they had to talk about colors in terms of emotion. What, you know, red was hot, and passionate, and so on. And, um, wow. So yeah, interesting, isn't it? That's really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Intriguing. I can't even imagine how the blind community could, you know, learn about art when they came and see the colors. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, you know, I'd be more intrigued if I hear that people that are blind can actually do art when they don't know what color they're using. Yeah, no, they, they certainly can. I should should send you some photographs of their work. They often post on Facebook amazing, amazing exhibitions they put on there. Mm, I see. Okay, both cos professors, do you have any more experiences you would like to ask this young student who is in your classes? Just in case. Oh, um, well, this kind of also extends beyond our classes, but, um, you know, we, um, all the three of us are going to keep working together through the FIG or the faculty interest group that we're a part of, um, including to advocate for students like you, Michael, to get jobs in the educational field is what we're hoping. Um, but what's been your experience as part of the FIG? And I should say it's not just faculty, but it's also staff and students and alumni who have graduated from Kingsborough years ago. Um, ha, what's been your experience being part of this uh, community at Kingsborough? Well, remembering from a few FIG meetings that I've attended during the fall semester, hmm, I'm happy to be part of it. I mean, all of you made some good discussions about what can we do for the disability community? I mean, there's a lot to be done and we're trying our best to figure things out. A lot of pondering, a lot of planning. What can we do? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I guess all I can say is this. Yes, it'll be complicated to figure things out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good to be strategizing with people like you and, and others who are working toward these goals. And, and also you've been involved in the international group, the Inclusion in Higher Education UK group. And we're really lacking a voice of students and young people in that group. So um, we're very lucky and grateful to have you in that group too. What I have learned from you, Professor Carpenter, I mean, I can be happy there are college programs in the UK, but unlike the ones here in America, we don't. We're not connected with regular college students. That's correct. That's correct. As you, as you were aware of with the Sheenan College music outreach that you are also involved in, that it's a specialist college. It's not inclusive. Right. And it, yeah, very lacking in that. Well, I'm glad I got to know some of them. Hmm. Uh, Professor Carpenter, any other questions just in case? I, I don't think so. Certainly not on camera. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's it for now. How about you, Professor Sawyer? Oh, I think I think I'm good. This was an enjoyable conversation here. Understood. Very well then. There are a few questions I'd like to ask you before we wrap it up. Um both college professors. Why have you taken an interest in that video I made? I mean, all I did was an assignment for Professor Carpenter's EDC 3000, which resulted in me making a song slash book for kids, <laughs> took an interest in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, there's many reasons. Um, I didn't ask you to make a video, so you went that extra mile and put it together. Um, I think the song, as we've as we have seen, has worked with young children. <laughs> and, but m mostly I just thought it was really charming and endearing in that you set up the book and you were talking about teeth and smiling and so on. And you did that as well, which I thought was ingenious and very creative. Um, it wasn't just you reading the book or singing the book. You, you animated it in your own face. Right. That's a great point. That's a great point, Sue. Yeah, Michael, you really, you really brought that book kind of to life. You, you were like literally the face of the book. And mm -hmm. I think, 
I think that's why my daughter was drawn to it when she watched it. And she said, who is this? And singing this song and she couldn't take her eyes away from you. And then uh, she wanted to run off to the bathroom and brush her teeth <laughs> right afterward, as I told you. Uh, <laughs> so it definitely connected with her. So when I saw how it connected with her, I was like, wow, this is a really special, special thing you did. <laughs> yeah, it was really nice. Not sure about her kids would like it, but I'm glad you, Professor Sawyer, have been sharing it lately. When you did your online internship with the little girl that you did some reading and, and conversation with and some art, um, she really connected with you. So I think you have, I don't know uh, how best to say it, but a real gift to uh, connect with children. And I guess that showed through through the way you presented the book and wrote the book. Right. Well, what can I say? Children is one of my career interests, of course. And that's why early childhood education is my favorite subject in my college program. And back to my question, I'm sorry. My actual question to you, Professor Carpenter. How I have been wanting to get into the classes of my favorite subject which you were a part of for a long time, but the pandemic made me take your classes remotely. And here I am in my fourth year fall semester. I finally got in one of your classes and it was the art one. I'm glad I was able to connect with your class. And, but my question to you is this, I got a little envious of some of my classmates able to work with kids somehow, which is something my college program can't provide for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I respect your honesty, Michael, there. And uh, yeah, I definitely sense that in your in the class. Um, and, you know, fingers crossed, everything crossed, you're going to be able to do a field course next semester with mm -hmm. Professor Esposito, and that you will be in a school and uh, you will have that experience. And I'm sorry in a way that it wasn't uh, hand in hand at the same time as the art workshop, but um, yeah, it, it is it is in the works. It's, it's gonna happen soon enough. Well, as you heard my viewers, Professor Carpenter is trying to get me into a field work course during my fourth year spring semester, which shall be the final semester of me attending KCC classes. During that time, I'd like to see if I can do it my EDC 2200 classmates have been doing, and that's being student teachers or getting field work courses of working with children. Ooh. Hmm. Proceeding. What was I gonna? Oh, yeah. Professor Sawyer? Mm -hmm. There was one final question I have for you, and I'm trying to remember. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, you, you know, remembering an assignment that me and my classmates had done for you, mm -hmm. how do you feel about some of us being interviewers? Um, yeah, great, great question. Um, yeah, because one of our assignments was a disability interview assignment uh, for the class. So, um, you know, I, I kind of feel like you're a natural interviewer because I've seen, um, you know, several of the interviews on your YouTube channel, which everyone should check out. And they're probably watching it now if they're seeing this video. Um, and, um, you know, I really thought it would be it would be an uh, interesting experience to see you interview someone about disability. Um and um, I know you were thinking for a while about who to interview and it's maybe, you know, tricky to figure out who to ask and who to interview. Um, and in the end, I think you did a fantastic interview with your mentor and he got to share some of his expertise working in the field of disabilities. And you got to ask him some nice questions about his job and his experience and sort of see where he's coming from. And um yeah, what was your experience? So I thought, you know, it was a great application of your skills in interviewing. And uh, how did you feel about that experience of doing that assignment? Well, it was a lot of work at the end. I had a lot of typing to do. Mm -hmm. I sure I typed the interview word by word. And I'm glad I got through at the end. 
But like you remembered, as an interviewer, I was happy to give him my all to connect with my interviewee. We allowed him to answer from his perspective, of course. And I hope to continue doing so on my channel. Yeah. I'm curious, did you audio record the interview or video record it or what format did you use to do it? Uh, video recording. Nice, nice. So are we going to see a video of it on your YouTube channel, possibly? Probably not. It was just for an assignment. Yeah, yeah. Makes also, sense. Also, all cam the camera was focusing on me at the time, not the interviewee. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, I think it's a nice transcript and a nice interview. So um, you could always think about posting it to your website, you know, with, with permission of your interviewee, of course. Um, and it could always be anonymous names. But yeah, I thought it was a, a nice interview. So maybe sharing it with others could be a good idea, too. Probably won't be added, but I'm glad I was able to mention this during mm -hmm. my time in your class. I'm glad mm -hmm. I was able to pass the class at the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm, Professor Susan Carpenter, are you there? Bye-bye. Oh, bye. bye. You too. Bye. I'm sorry. I had to take that call. Um, Michael. Understood. Yes, I'm still here. Understood. Okay. To both my college professors, I think that's it for now, so I will give my final statement. To all my viewers out there, I, Michael Etman, have enjoyed my fourth year fall semester with the two college professors that I have a strong connection with. I am glad I have attended their classes. I'm glad at the end I managed to have passed both their classes. And I've learned so much from both of them, like always. And as I am still in the middle of my fourth year. Graduation lies ahead of me a few more semesters and I hope to whew, do well enough and be ready enough for when that day comes. Whew. Do I have a senior project to work on? I have to work on my career path. Ooh, a lot lies ahead of me. To both my college professors, how do you both feel about me graduating? So I'm excited for that. that. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to June and and uh, waving you on. Mm -hmm. The professors uh, sit up front and we get to see you come up and take your certificate. Mm -hmm. Understood. Well, a lot in my mind for that. I hope to be ready for it. So professors, Please say goodbye to my viewers, please. Yeah, goodbye viewers. Uh, take care and thanks for having us, Michael. Thanks for your passion, your insight, everything you bring to your education and your journey. Uh, it's a pleasure to know you. Yeah. It's, it's been a pleasure to be part of this uh, group with, with, with Professor Sawyer and yourself and with all the other advocates and all the other students that you've in a way, you've really influenced them this semester in, in a very positive way. So thank, thank you. you. Hmm. And I thank you both for a great semester that I've had with you. Stay tuned for more of Living With Autism by Michael Lettman. That is all.